Now, everybody, I think, loves Bollywood. If you like Bollywood, raise your hand. Come on, be honest. Really? It, come on, you you do like Bollywood. I know just a little bit, okay? Don't tell anybody. All right, I know this though, all right? And, you know, that's where there are fantasies. But imagine if you could be a director of a Bollywood movie that would come true. Now, think about that for a minute. You could take what you want that seems to be a fantasy and make it real. And I have to tell you, I have personal experience of doing that. You know, I told you the little bit of the secret, and that was that Mickey Mouse drives a Toyota. I'm going to show you how hospitality works together with a real lean or fast way to do things, but it's really to fly his airplane. It's how do you get to the airport and fly your plane? And I'm going to tell you how all to be a Bollywood director in his expensive airplane flying around and making the world better. So he drives his car to fly the airplane, and the airplane is the most important part. It creates a great culture and great results. So I'm going to ask you to do the Bollywood imagination. Imagine patients waiting in the offices unhappily for two and a half to four hours. That seems impossible, doesn't it? Oh, imagine there are not enough chairs for all the patients and their families. Impossible, right? Maybe it's real. People are not happy with waiting. People are working from 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., for 50, maybe 60 patients. Doctor is seeing two or three patients before they discharge them. You have tired and unhappy staff. You know, the staff are missing their kids after school events like sports or arts. And you know, you're even missing family dinners. Oh God, can you imagine how horrible would that be? And then, oh my God, that was me. Oh my God, maybe it's you. Bollywood's maybe real. So let's let's have that Bollywood event. Let's 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 have the hero come in. I'm not a good dancer, so I'm not going to do the dance, okay? But this is what we're going to talk about. I didn't want to live this way, and I had lived this way for 25 years. This is what I was taught. This is what I was told. This is how you do it. And then I had a revolution, a revelation. Really, it was me and my team to blame. And you know what? I'm supposed to be the guy to lead, and I wasn't leading. I was just walking along how I was taught. It was my responsibility to lead the change. Think of that as a revelation, okay? Not just say, go do this, go do this. I was there to think. I was there to make the world a better place, not just for the patients, but for the patients, my staff, and everyone else. But then I came to realize it's everyone's responsibility to lead. Don't we have the divine spark in each of us? Are we supposed to find it? Yeah. So all of a sudden, let's everybody lead. Let's everyone together build our future. So... Together, we invent. Together, we have to think differently. We've been thinking the same way for 50 or 60 years. So together, that means we have to work differently. We have to communicate with each other differently. And we have to meet together differently. Every time we had a conversation, now it was a safe space. There's no, you're wrong, I'm right. There's no, oh, you're bigger and stronger and, and higher than I am. No, we all of a sudden are now communicating differently. So then lightning. It hit us. Oh, my goodness. It's all about one thing and one thing only to make this Bollywood dream come true. And you know what that was? Culture. How you meet, how you communicate, how you value, what you want the future to be. And you find that future from within you. You build that future and you find it. So I'm going to tell you what happened to us in a very short period of time. All right. Now, I told you that we were taking a long time. In 2010, when the lightning hit us, it was three and a half hours for patients in the office, 50 patients per doctor, over eight to 10 hours, maybe 12 hours, and people gave us four out of five stars. That was in 2010. Lightning hit. What happened next? In 2011, the patient was in the office for only an hour. The doctors were seeing 70 patients in about eight hours, and we went up to 4.9 plus stars out of five. Bollywood. No, real. We we're working together very differently. And we were loving what we we're doing. And we're getting home for dinner. 2020, 50 minutes a patient in office, 100 plus patients a day per doctor, seven and a half hours, and even higher quality ratings. And we are voted the best workplace in Virginia. And how do you get that? They ask the staff that are working there. I'm not allowed to answer. 
Oh, I got a great place, don't I? You don't get to talk. Okay, fine. Now there's this thing called COVID that comes in, right? 90% of all of American ophthalmology offices closed down. We're open and we only dropped to 80 patients in seven hours and still maintained a 4.96 star rating and nobody got sick. 2023, we're a little faster, few more patients and people are even happier. And we still have, we're known as the highest quality, lowest cost delivered in North America, okay? And it, it, the, the, it's, not, it's not for me. I, I, I appreciate that, but that's not for me. I have a fabulous partner. I have a great leadership team. All these people I recognized are much better than I am, okay? Originally, this was all set out to say how great the doctor is, and the nurse is okay too, and everyone else listens to how wonderful we are. Once you realize that's a bunch of junk, you're going to set free a tremendous opportunity. So we also were able to make this change and improve the access to the poor, those in need, and do even more good work. So our values are very similar to yours, saving sight, enhancing lives. We're always where you need us, when you need us. We value first and highest quality at the lowest cost. And the bottom one that's hard to read, I'm sorry, but we are living in the future and we're building for what's not there to help us lead in the future and live in the future. So we have 10 locations, a telemedicine network. We have a research institute. We have adult facility delivery, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, with these huge responsibilities at the very beginning in 2010, we realized we did not have enough staff. We did not have enough space. We didn't have enough time. We got plenty of will, we got plenty of smarts. It's Bollywood time. Miracles are going to happen. Dance, please, dance, 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 dance. Okay. Now we realize that Darwin was right. We have to evolve because if we don't evolve, we're going to die. So what do you do? You take a good team and you make it a great team. You don't have enough staff? Sure you do. You raise everyone up so they're the best staff and they can do more. It's possible that you're not enough space you reimagine it intelligently and it becomes plenty of space, even more space than you need. And if you don't think you have enough time, you find out you have plenty of time, as you can see. So we have plenty of will, plenty of smarts, and this is how we put it all together. I'm taking a 12-day talk, okay, and I'm only going to take five hours today, okay? Okay, six. So this is all about change management. How are you going to do it? So you have to stamp out the dogma. We live in this world for 25, 60 years. Our friends, neighbors, our founders gave it to us, and that was the best at the time. But they expect us to invent like they did. So you have to build the team excitement. You have to promote a reward of culture of invention, not innovation. We invent. There's a big difference here. And you have to look beyond healthcare for your answers because healthcare pretty much stinks. Okay? It's inventive for the research of diseases. It's great for all the things that we do that are care. But to be able to make us bigger, better, answering the changing world, it's not that great. So we have to apply and invent best practices. A KPI is a key performance indicator. It's how you measure something that's important. So you have to find new things to measure. You have to look at what is the real problem, the root cause, and you have to think about that every day. And most importantly, a Kaizen is when in the lean process, when you're looking to fix things, the Kaizen event is where you see how every step takes place. And what step is working, what step's not? What is the little link in the chain? If you think of everything going through what happens in a day as a river, a patient is on a flow somewhere, where is that water backing up? Where is that dam or bridge or where there's a big lake of a backup? What stops that flow through? What gets in the way? So think of how you fix those little blockages every day or big blockages. So to do this, you have to make sure everyone understands who and what and why you're there. We know from my wisdom tradition, I'm a Jewish guy, is that it's called tikkun olam. We're here to rebuild the world every day. It's our responsibility of the divine working through us. We have to align the staff to our North Star. Everybody knows where we're going. And this change management, it comes from the bottom to the top, as well as the top to the bottom. And in this whole world, there's nothing sacred except what we're doing to help others. It's our job to lead, not follow. That's very different. Our architecture of control has been to lead and you listen to the people above you, not the way we do it. We're very flat. So here's a time where you work smarter, not harder. And we're nimble now. We're able to have this positive energy. 
We're alert. We have to, we have the opportunity to be quick witted. We have fun and we're quick on our feet. So I'll give you an example. There's a very famous architect that says form follows function. And that means if you're going to do something in a space, they design the space in that fashion. Now, what if over 25 or 40 years, what you're doing in that space has changed a lot? That space doesn't fit. The, the hermit crab goes someplace else and gets a bigger shell. The wonderful little caterpillar goes into something but changes and all of a sudden starts flying as a beautiful butterfly. So if we think of like a Karana store owner, every square foot is valuable. So only what should be there and should happen should be there. They don't sell tires at a Karana store. So why should we do paperwork in the clinic, right? Now, we only want whatever is proven to be there. And it's our responsibility as us now as a team to take away the stuff that shouldn't be there, to change our environment, to communicate with each other, to make it all happen. So you have to have new management tools. And that is, we're going to manage the flow of the process as it goes through. When the patient starts here and comes through, whether it's being checked in or where they go, fewer steps, or where and when the tests happen, or if the test is not getting back, think of how everything is flowing as this river and what's not in the right place. Are we making the river flow backwards? Are we having a bridge that we've got to go over or going uphill instead of downhill with the river? So if you manage the flow and not the people, the people will show up. You'll find the ways to put the people in the right place or the automation or the electronics or the AI. So I say, blow it all up. Frank Lloyd Wright says, make that function work. But I also say, blow it up. You have to visualize the river every day. You have to think parallel, not linear. And you want to automate or eliminate anything you do more than a couple of times a day. And also think really hard what that next step is. Because when someone brings a patient to me, I'm a customer and the people that are working up front that are bringing the things to me, they know what I need. And the people that are bringing that to that person, they know what they need. So when you think about the flow, what should be happening in each place and who really should perform that step, then you can then track and shape your success. So this is all not about the doctors and nurses. It's about the empty chair in your lobby. We don't have a waiting room. We have a lobby. We should have all empty chairs. But if some, we do have an empty chair if somebody's tired and they want to sit. And that could be, instead of the doctors and the nurses, that empty chair. Someone's messing with my controls. Okay, guys, you stopped my slideshow. There you go. Thank you. It's all about my 93-year-old Uncle Bennett. You wouldn't know that he was a war hero. You wouldn't know he was one of the smartest architects on the planet you wouldn't know that he was responsible for building the world's largest orphanage after the Korean conflict. So to do this, as I told you, it's our culture. So you need a cultural evolution. True patient focus is the priority. We have to live in their shoes. It's not about the doctors, not about the nurses, not about the ladies or the sisters. It's all about the patient's needs. It's all about the family's needs. And remember, it's not about us and how good we are. That's important. We have to find the overarching cultural fit because healthcare can be toxic. So we found a great example. You know, Bollywood's not really well enough known in, in the U.S., so we use Disney World because Disney's concrete. A lot of people visit Disney, yet guests never feel like they're part of a crowd. The staff take genuine interest helping, and they're serving the guests. And now the staff, they're always on stage. We're putting on a show. We're creating experience. It's not about me moping around, oh, this is late, or I'm tired, or I'm working too hard. They do not want to hear that. They're there because they're scared. They're there because they're going blind and they're there to help us. Spiritual leaders don't have bad days. Politicians can't have a bad day. We can't have a bad day because people rely on us so much. Understand that and you'll be able to change your world because now you're giving of yourself to others and it's no longer centered on yourself. Most important. So if you're always on stage, you have to know that no one should ever see the backstage, just like in theater. So you're always in and you never break out of being on stage. So you're always on stage with guests. And it's always a beautiful environment. When you go to the theater, it's always nice there. So the clinic is always nice. It's always beautiful. It is a, a beautifully architected place. So the environment should be transcendent and it should give you an advantage. Now, if you're going to do that, as I told you, we now have to rethink who we are 
and what we're supposed to accomplish. So if you reimagine what we should do, you strip away all the titles. You're all naked in front of each other, sort of. You remove the artificial or dogmatic constraints, the things that held us in place all these years, and they were really good at the time. But I don't ride a horse to work anymore. Okay? Plain and simple. I don't ride a bicycle to work anymore. I have, we have offices, we go far places. So if you understand that this change is required and who should do what, then you make sure you have the right people with the right talent in the right places, right seats. That means you got to be really honest. You have to great, have a great, honest evaluation and performance at all levels, including me. They do a 360 evaluation of me and everybody else. And we make sure we are continually educating ourselves and improving our abilities by coaching group feedback, and the scary part, education, right? So as I told you, we work smarter, not harder. How do we solve this? How do we improve an opportunity, not a challenge? So if you do that, you can find and grow your team. You can create the innovative and inventive environment for internal continuous education. We call ours the WKI University. And we also make sure we support the emotional and spiritual group needs of all of our team. We use targeted education. We bring in educational moments and we have people read books together. Be Our Guest is a great book that talks about how Disney does what they do. And the fundamental success, that definition of fundamental success at Disney is you want to exceed your guests' expectations everywhere. So that means you have to pay attention to every detail of every product at every level. And you have to remember and be mindful that everything speaks. Every aspect of it is there. So you never can stop growing or learning and know that your aim has to be on the future because things change over time. And if you're there building for what others want and not for what you want, then all of a sudden the world is a much better place. So our clinic success is on optimized responsibilities. The staff now make decisions that were once reserved for the doctor. Think about that. You'll be secure enough and brave enough and educate the people around you well enough they're going to be making decisions that you used to have to do. It's most important that you have the provider validate what's coming to you. And how do you do those sorts of things? The same as a pilot in an airplane. An airplane has an autopilot. There are now aircraft that line up with the air with the runway. The pilot leans back and goes, push the button, and it takes off. Push the button. It flies where it's supposed to go. Push the button, land. Push the button, and taxi. Now, is a pilot going like this and that and pulling and looking at the oil and do these things? No, it's a system that makes it safe. And it makes it so that just like everything else in the system I've described to you, it's something that you can rely on. And it's something that's based on communication back and forth. And you have everybody do the things that only they can do. So in pilot monitored flight, it has the opportunity for the, for the captain to validate the rules to be followed to make sure that what's happening well, and he only touches the controls if something's not doing well. And that's because he relies on something called crew resource management. The crew is important. The crew tells him what's going on. The crew relates to the captain and the crew can tell the captain, hey, captain, you're messing up. Hey, captain, you better go around, okay? That's the kind of open, honest communication that's possible. So if you're the top provider, then you have the real-time reporting of the clinic and the process that's taking place. The results, the needs, the path deviations, the accuracy, and most importantly, when and where to dispose or do what to the patient. So if we optimize every step to the highest value, the top provider or the doctor will only see the guest once. Once. There's one-stop shopping when the doctor walks in to meet with the patient. Just like your board examination. When you sit down for your boards, after you've not had, you know, your bowel problems and your scares, they're going to say, what's this problem? And you're going to, they'll open a book. You'll see, you'll see it on the video. And then you'll ask for more information. What about an angiogram? There it is. What about an OCT? There it is. What about a corneal pachymetry? There it is. So you never want or ask for anything when it's the time for you to see the patient because the staff knows what you need for that patient 97% of the time. And it's your responsibility to educate them to do it. It's your responsibility to be their teammate and not call them dopes or stupid. It's you think they didn't do it right, then it's your responsibility. You messed up, not the staff. It really isn't. You're the one to educate and make the process work. And the room is always prepared for the treatment. So staff are making decisions that were once for the doctor. 
They're educated and they know the preferred practice patterns. And I've got college kids that are reading the test results and entering the results. And all of our staff, all of our team, all the technicians, if you will, we get them for a year, one year. And within one and a half months, they can be operating the OCTs, reading them. They can look at the angiography. They rotate through the entire practice. And if you've been with us for four or five months, you become a scribe. That's our educational system. That's because it's up to us to make sure we bring them up and we raise them. And we only get them for a year, maybe a year and a half. And then they go to medical school or they end up going into veterinary school. Some have even gone into to other things too. So that's how this works. And one of our key mantras is that if I touch a keyboard, it's a failure. Think about it. I'm not there to do any data entry. My purpose is to be watching the autopilot and validating the process. And so if I'm continuously teaching and talking to the patient and the patient's family, I have no business going, tick, 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 tick. we've got people to do that. And I could say, oh, I could dictate that, but that's not the same as having the people working with me help the patient and grow in the whole process. So we have our task environment where we have to take care of what happens on stage, a great experience. So you walk in, this is not very fancy, but you're greeted and all of a sudden the environment brings you up. It's a very smooth path. This is where the family members just sit for just a moment as they walk to the right to get the imaging done. And then a similar office space where you walk over here to the right to get the imaging and over the right behind that is a place for people to watch videos. And when you come into the office, there's nothing scary. There's no needle sitting out. There's nothing what you have, but over there, right under that, that little piece of paper, those are the two injections. They never, ever see the needles. And we do it in the office. There is the needle right, ready for me right as I'm between the patient, this chair and the patient's right behind me, but it's still turned upside down, right? So here are keys to our magic kingdom. We're mission driven. It's all about the guest having exceptional experience and it's going to be impactful. And it's going to be people talking about how great it was to see the doctor. We have a culture of invention to support rapid evolution. We're always learning. We are agile. We're nimble. We have a mutual respect of all levels within the organization. Nobody's holy or sacred. And we have a safe environment for different views and different opinions. It's all about the process and the flow. We manage the flow and the people fall. We are, understand that it's the top provider that monitors it and we'll look and see if the process is correct. We only see the patient once. We do not do any data entry as a provider. Repetition is automated or eliminated, and we have regular cross-level and cross-organization communication. There are no silos. Nobody holds on to anything, nobody's sacred. We make sure we have the best people in the best positions. We do regular education. All the staff receive personal and professional educational support. Our, fee our, our facilities are designed forward, and they're designed to be able to change over time, as are the clothing, communications, and care. And you know what's really nice? We have fun together because we're venting, we're making the future. So what would Walt Disney do? Well, his fundamental success is exceeding guest expectations. Customers want memorable experiences, and we stage, stage great experiences. We convince guests to remember and recommend us, and little experiences are always done in such a way and very well that they'll add up to a big experience. So what else did he say? You never get a second chance to make a great impression. Not a first impression, but a great impression. Now, the other thing that's really hard for a physician to remember, a provider to remember, is that guests may not always be right, but they're always your guest. So you can't walk out of the room going, oh, geez, I just want to tell me that's terrible. Nope. It's like, why, well, thank you for coming. So good to see you. And in your mind, you may be going, oh, this is terrible. My God. You go, thank you for coming. So good to see you, Mrs. Patel. Thank you for being here. You know, that's Bollywood at its best. And you can never stop growing and never stop believing. So always remember the spirit, the magic begins with you. And so as we go along, take that lean Toyota, take that process of flow and take that happiness and go fly your plane. Thank you for your talk today.